blessings and blessings from the beautiful California, Southern California. Uh, today's transmission is how to keep the romance alive in a long-term relationship after you've become uh, glorified roommates. I want to start with saying that life, from what I know of it, happens in seasons and cycles. And just like the birds in the background, there's certain seasons and cycles where they are here and certain seasons and cycles where they are not. Uh, there is no problem with that other than my judgment of whether they should be here or they should not be here. I believe that it's okay to have a time in your relationship where the attraction isn't as high, where you aren't necessarily, you know, floating on cloud nine like you were when you met and it was three months in. That's okay. What's more important than uh, always being, uh, let's say, sexually charged is owning who and what you are and allowing yourself to be the most authentic, unleashed version of yourself. Because in my opinion, that's what will create the polarity and the sexual attraction and all of the things and part B to that as it pertains to your partner, to me, what is more important than um, the sex thing, because sex comes and goes. Right? The, the attraction thing comes and goes. Uh, and then it comes again, and then it goes again. That's the process. That's what makes this whole thing fun. You know, I love, love my wife dearly. And sometimes she gets on my nerves. And I know for sure that I get on hers. And so, where we, in my opinion, have a leg up, not that this is a competition, but where our relationship is fantastic, is that we actually love each other from a friend standpoint as well. Like, I actually enjoy being around her. And I make sure that I have space and time when I am not around her. I make sure that What's my business is my business and what's hers is hers. A lot of times we collapse into these sort of morphed beings where it's just like one instead of two. And biologically that's true to a degree. Like we have, uh, we share biology, right? Like my nervous system is attached to hers where they're connected and yet I am a sentient being sent here to, uh, <laughs> live out and be the work that I came here to live and be. And she's a part of that journey. And yet she is not all of that journey. And that's where uh, there's a wild card involved. A lot of times we, we think that we need to always be checking in and there with each other and all that kind of stuff. And it, it actually stales the relationship as opposed to brings it alive part of to me why our relationship is so alive is that I don't think I completely know her and I know she doesn't know me because I'm still figuring me out and so there's there's a, a space room for us to both evolve in our space and that's sexy it's interesting and I make sure that I stay interested in her unfoldment just like I do in mine that I'm gonna leave it there that is a huge key I make sure that I am interested in her unfoldment just like I as just like I am in mine. So I stay curious, I ask her questions, I probe for what she's learning, who she's being, who she's connecting with. And if either one of us goes into that humdrum like, fine, everything's fine, 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 oh it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, good, I shake things up because I'm the leader of the house. At least that's how I see it blessings and blessings please leave a comment if this resonated or uh yeah triggered you or whatever the case may be i'm just talking off the cuff about what my truth is love you all leave a comment